This automation takes in a user email and then outputs research to our Slack channel about the company they work at with ARR, some info about them and other details, as well as a drafted email directly in my inbox that's semi-personalized so that I can set up a 15 minute meeting as, as quick as possible after they sign up. Let's break down exactly how this automation works. It does look a little daunting at a glance if you're not familiar with Agent Hub, but it is quite simple when we go step by step. So the first step is filtering out personal emails. We start with an input node where we take in someone's email. These are all anonymous emails. I'm not trying to dox our users, but we pass that to through a, a couple of filter nodes that are trying to eliminate Gmail accounts and Hotmail accounts, for example. And then if we filter out, we, we filtered out any emails as in like there is no email left, the filter, this conditional node has a condition type is empty, then we uh, just output here and do nothing. This is like a failure case. If it isn't empty, as in it's not a personal email, then what we do is we take that email and we split it here. So we're splitting it on the at symbol and we're taking the second half so that we just have that domain name. And with that domain name, we're gonna do all of our research. First, we scrape their company website and we summarize it with GPT, GPT 3.5. Uh, I, I edited the prompt template a little bit so that it's it's really summarizing the, it, it understands that it's summarizing a company's website and their background. That is what is outputted here, this one liner about what they do. Uh, this is useful because if it's a startup, for example, that signs up and they don't have public information about their ARR or uh, other details like this, then we at least have uh, a one-liner about what their company does. Next, we take that same domain name and we pass it into our enrich contact information node. This is, this is using several third parties in the background trying to find uh, information about them. We, uh, if, if we can't find the info on one third party, we default to the next and so on until we get the right information. So we're getting their company name, industry, ARR, and country. We could get more, but that's all I wanted for this use case. And then uh, we we should be done for send it, for formatting the Slack message, but I do one last step here where I just convert this large number with no commas into human readable form with AI. I find it's nicer for the Slack message. Uh, you could delete this step if you don't want it. And then we format this message. You'll notice this is the exact same formatting as our Slack message here. And then we send it to Slack. Finally, we want to draft the email. So we go all the way back and you notice we send that email output all the way here to a, a combined text node and an AI node. And we're combining, we're, we're, give, we're passing GPT a little bit more information like their full email and the company name that they work at. You can see it from this node over here. We're just passing this info in so that we're able to personalize the email a little bit. And all I'm asking GPT to do, GPT-4 specifically, is to use this email template, but if it's obvious what their first name is from their email, then make the decision to address them by, by name. Otherwise, just say, hey. So that, that's kind of the only reason I'm not using just a find and replace here, because uh, sometimes they have like weird, it could be like tp at maersk.com. We don't know what their first name is, but if it's tom at maersk.com, then the AI will make the decision to say, hey, Tom, which I think helps for personability. And it's what I do when I send out emails. Finally, with this body for the email, we pass it to the body parameter of the Gmail sender. We know the recipient because all the way back here, we have their email. I'm hard coding the subject and asking for 15 minutes of their time in a semi-personal way. And if I were to press run on this, the automation's getting triggered. Okay, so I, the Slack message is sent and the email's in my inbox. I won't open my personal Slack, uh, but it, it looks almost identical to this. And the, the way we trigger this within our own app is we just use our webhook trigger. So you can trigger any automation, kind of like an API. You just copy this into your code, pass in the inputs, which you have in your backend or wherever you're calling this code from, and uh, your automation gets triggered on, on event. Yep, so that's how uh, 
that's how it works. Um, it's totally customizable. You can change any of these nodes for anything you want. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just shoot me a, shoot me a message. My, I'll leave my email in the description of this video. Thanks.